Today is Monday, which means it is the day after a new episode of The Last of Us came out. This show has been, uh, quite frankly, it has replaced Yellowstone, which is so dear to my heart, but it has replaced Yellowstone for me as the current best show on TV, I, I, I believe. Like, that takes nothing away from Yellowstone or Succession, but I just think The Last of Us has just done such a superior job of television making HBO, yet does it again. Now, last night was a very different kind of episode, which we knew from last week because, you know, they did the whole next time on The Last of Us. And, of course, it was the DLC content episode, yeah. right? And it was written exclusively by Neil Druckmann, which he hadn't done. He either collaborated or or Craig Mason wrote all the episodes, but this was written only from, by him. Yeah, the big title at the beginning of it, written for television by Druckmann, right? Now, we are going to a little bit later today at 3 p.m. Los Angeles time. That's 6 p.m. New York time. We're going to be having our Last of Us open spoiler discussion a little bit later. So make sure you come on back. We'll talk in full open spoilery details. So we're going to try to be speaking generalities here without going into too much spoilers of this. All right. I would probably say that this was my second least favorite episode of the season. Hmm. Understanding, of course that that still makes it for me, even though I don't give numerical scores, like an 8.5 out of 10 for me, maybe even a nine out of 10 for me. Like it was, because I'll tell you what, what they did with the flashback here, everything about The Last of Us, the series, has been about characters. It's all been about characters and world building and character building. And that is what has made the narrative so rich. And they made a decision to do this DLC content, this kind of flashback episode, if you will, with only one purpose in mind. Help us have a better understanding of Ellie. Her mindset, her motivations, what is making her do what we have seen her done do and what we're going to see her do moving forward. And because when we meet this little girl chained into a room that the Fireflies had, we know she's snarky, she's quick-witted, she's smart, but I believe coming out of this episode, which, by the way, you know, they said in the after show about it, it's like, we had to find an actress to play. What was the character that Storm Reed play? Riley. Riley, right. They said, to find somebody to play Riley, for the emotional weight of this to work, you got to find somebody who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bella Ramsey, and that is not a small task. So who they find? Reed. And boy, she delivered she was great. She delivered. I, the moment she shows up in this bedroom, in this scene, I instantly believed the connection and the bond. And a little reminiscent of the Bill and Frank episode, finding moments of beauty in the world, innocence in the world, that, that something so cherishable and special can exist in this world. And when it does, it really stands out to you. And also... That when something beautiful in the world, this world happens to you, it's instantly taken away. Um, I mean, I, I just found this to be, while not my favorite episode of the season, by the time it was done, I still sat on my couch afterwards for a bit, just contemplating the episode and going back more into the character building of Ellie. And, 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 and you know what? It made me go back to the previous episode as well when she's really freaking pissed. Like there is no understanding about hey, I think my brother Tommy could be a better fit for taking... Now we get it a little bit more. Again, we're not going to go into details. We'll do that a little bit later. Anyway, I, I love this episode, even though it was maybe my second least favorite episode of the season. I still absolutely loved it. Anyway, Chris, you had a chance to watch the new episode of The Last of Us. What did you make of it? Oh, man. It gives that argument she had with Joel so much more weight. Just yeah. like just like in the game, right? When you do the DLC, you're like, oh, it all makes sense now. I understand. This isn't just some kid with a chip on their shoulder. They've really gone through some shit. And this does that so well. I love how they juxtapose the present and the past in this episode, too. I think they did that really masterfully. This is a really big music episode. I don't know if you've gotten to watch it yet, Jonathan. No. I don't oh, know. This is I'm a... left behind. So. <laughs> well done. Well I gotta done. catch up. This is a really music heavy episode, so I'm really interested to hear your thoughts in it that, again, tie directly into the games. And I think they're going to have a really lovely emotional payoff moving forward in the series as well. There's just a lot to unpack in this one, and I'm really excited to talk about it later. You know, one of the things I really loved about this episode, again, speaking in generalities, there's a scene where 
we saw a little glimpse of it before where she's talking to like her in the flash of her Federic commander. Yeah, that's I love that scene. There's Claudia, I think her name is Claudia Gray, did a Star Wars novel called Lost Stars. I think that was the name of the Star Wars novel. And I loved it because it told the story of these two people, one who went, beloved friends of in, chi in childhood, one went the rebellion way, one went the imperial way. And that novel did a great job of painting a picture for us. Well, like why some people, why some good people would end up in the empire? Why some good, well-meaning people end up in the empire? And there's a scene in this show, again, we won't go into the details of their conversation, where we meet a Federal commander who's just kind of like, listen, we do this because if we weren't here, these people would starve or kill each other. Like, and they, they kind of humanize Fedra. And his conversation and his words don't ring hollow because we just left Kansas. We're suddenly, Fedra wasn't there, and guess what? Things got worse. And so they do this thing to challenge the idea of pure black and pure white in an increasingly gray world. I love that. Anyway, Rob, you had a chance to see the episode. What did you make of it? I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I knew it was going to be a different offbeat episode, and I thought it was interesting that they used the DLC content for the basis of this, but I thought it was really smart because, you know, learning about Ellie's backstory, I think, has been important. She's made, she's alluded to, no, I've done this before. This is the first time I've killed something or whatever. But that choice that you were just talking about, it really put in the, the civilization that she exists in in stark relief. I mean, you either there is no world you know and so whatever meager scraps of civilization that are left behind if you can choose to be part of the higher ups you know the the haves as opposed to the half nots that's basically what she's being offered and it is nothing and one of the things that i love about her character is throughout the series we've seen her discovering these things that she's never experienced like an airplane you know yeah. and, and talking about these things and seeing this there was a certain joie de vivre like going into a mall and and all of that it really again it shows this show is really about what is the end of civilization it makes me at least realize all the things that we have that we take for granted buying gas at a gas station that works escalators and what oh escalators, uh, escalators. there you go i mean like look at this how great's that and and i was wondering if this is the west side pavilion you know i don't know where they shot this maybe they shot it in canada but it just it it made me because it looks like the West Side Pavilion. There was an A and I mean, nice. This had nothing to do with the story. There was an A and W in there. It was from. It was supposed to be. I think they shot it in Canada. Oh, they they, they probably <laughs> did. But um, uh, I I just I I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Again, the civilization, everything that we've lost, and we're never going to get it back. It's never coming back. And she got a little bit of a taste of of that life, and it was great to see. But it also made me, you know mournful at the end like ugh, why are you why even continue on in this world uh guys i, I what can i say I, not even my favorite episode of the season but i i love this again they 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 keep doubling down they keep investing into building character building character building character mm -hmm. and it's all having such a delightful prayer it pisses me off that we only have two episodes left i i know i'm so pissed off we only have two episodes left anyway guys question is for you did you have a chance to watch The Last of Us Episode 7? If so, what did you guys think about it? And don't forget, come on back at 3 p.m. Los Angeles time. That's 6 p.m. New York time for our Last of Us open spoiler discussion after show. We hope to see you guys there. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com 
mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. $45 